Hello and welcome. Well, when I say the words essential oils, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Now, you may think of aromatherapy and nice smelling oils that fill your house and make it smell beautiful, and or you may think of essential oils as an alternative therapy to help relieve the symptoms of stress. But in fact, uh, essential oils have much more uses than this and are known to be effective in treating common health problems. Now, this can be known as an alternative form of medicine, um, as a high quality natural product uh, to aid and assist health and well-being, which of course is a personal choice and for you to decide to use or not to use. But um, the question is really, un until now, did you know that essential oils can be used in and around the home with a wide range of uses? T till now, I didn't actually. I've always just burnt them and uh, in my diffuser, really. I use them almost every single day, but didn't know that there was different uses for them in and around the home. And so we're looking uh, forward to this chat today and learning more about it um, with our special guest, Melissa Raymond. Now, Melissa is a physiotherapist and has a strong passion for seeking out natural evidence-based health options for her family and after completing her PhD she now uses her research skills to help uh, dive deeper into evidence uh, into all things being eczema, allergies, food intolerances and gut health and she helps parents uh, with children that have eczema, allergies and food intolerances with evidence-based approaches so their child can finally feel comfortable physically and emotionally and have the entire family um, so they can actually start living their life again. And she's also a mum to two beautiful boys. Now, thank you so much for joining us, Mel. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, it's great to chat and it's a great topic as well um, because I think there's, everybody loves um, the smell or the majority of people love the smell of essential oils and, and just that feeling, of course, that they can sort of give you calm and, and serenity and just nice smelling stuff. Um, <laughs> in general, <laughs> it's, a, it's, this, it's a really interesting chat about how else we can use essential oils. Um, but just talking about you for a moment, it's been said that you're proud to say that you're a research nerd. So others, I am, parents, yeah. <laughs> don't have to be and we really thank you for that um, because you love your research so I'd love to just know um, just from the get-go like where did your passion for essential oils originally come from? Well look to be honest um, I do like a bargain and it always started <laughs> it started off with a little starter kit I, I didn't know anything about essential oils and um, I was part of a natural co-op group on, it was, I think it was a Facebook group about 10 years ago and they were, she was selling essential oils and it came in a little pack and I thought that was a bargain. So I got a little starter kit because it came with lavender and tea tree and I knew about lavender and tea tree. I knew that lavender was soothing to the skin and tea tree you used for cleaning and I didn't know what any of the other oils um, did, but you know, um, I thought I'd get started with those two. And my little one at the time had eczema. Um, he's nearly 10 now. And so I thought I would make a little moisturiser from the lavender and the tea tree and some shea butter. Then I knew exactly what was in the moisturiser that I was putting on his skin for his eczema. Uh, and it worked really well. And to be honest, the other five or eight oils sat untouched for about three years because I didn't know about the amazing properties of the other oils. Um, and then I stumbled upon a, a, a new friend who um, told me that I could actually use the other things for other helpful health things around the house and just to make, to simplify our life. That's what I was looking for. Um, and that's how our journey began with essential oils. Now, all in all, apparently there are, are over 90 commonly used essential oils, 90, 90, which I find just fascinating. Um, and each naturally are, are associated with their own health claims. Um, and I'd love to know, um, or actually I'll ask you that, that this in a moment. I, I hope you don't mind for the moment. I've actually made a quick list of the top 10 of the 90 that are most popular that people m more than likely have yeah, sort of fantastic. heard. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I'd love to hear. 
Yeah. And, and um, so we'll sort of go through them and just very briefly, just the health benefits. Um, and I'd love for you to let me know if I've missed anything or if you want to definitely add anything. Um, one, um, of course, is peppermint um, and that's used to boost energy and aid digestion. Um, I use this on, an, uh, on a regular basis. So I've got, um, I don't want to use the name of the brand, but um, uh, 100% essential oils. I sort of rub it in my hands and sniff it and that sort of stuff. But peppermint is really great to boost energy and a digestion. Do you use that one at all? Yes, it's absolutely a commonly used one around the house too. We, we, I also use it for um, ants. If you've got ants around your kitchen, you can make up a little easy spray to um, ward off the ants around your home. Nice one. Um, next one is lavender. Um, as we know, that is to um, help um, relieve stress. Um, so I, I've actually been to a lavender farm before and I've seen them. Um, I've actually purchased um, lavender that you can actually is edible as well so uh, this is um not saying that um essential oil for lavender can be edible but lavender overall as a as a plant can be edible but for an essential oil it's used to relieve stress so is there anything else that you use it for at all oh look i love to mix this one with peppermint and frankincense as well to help with any time i feel tension in the body sometimes you get that bit of a heavy head so that's what i'll use that for as well yeah. combining them nice that's a nice little mixture there um sandalwood um is used to help calm nerves and um, helps with focus do you use it for anything else i will use that uh with a mix of with orange as well or any of the citrus oils that woody and citrus makes a really nice um as well for the calming but just an energy boost with together and it can make a really nice replacement for perfume Excellent. I love that citrusy sort of smell. Um, bergamot yeah. is used to reduce stress and improve skin conditions, like you were saying before, like eczema. So do you use that um, or do, have you used that with your, your son at all? Not for, not for the skin, but I actually use make up a blend for sleep and it contains bergamot in it with a lavender. And it's really, really beautiful and um, um, calming as well. Mm. The next one is called, uh, is called Rachel. The next one is <laughs> rose and rose can be used to improve mood and reduce anxiety. Do you use uh, rose oil for anything? Uh, we also use rose for um, helping with the skin too. So it's a really beautiful one to use on the face, just diluted. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, rose is my son's favorite oil and the most expensive one. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and the next this, this next one I didn't know you could actually get it in an oil um, is chamomile and that's used to improve mood and relaxation so do you use chamomile oil for anything at all you can also pop it in a tea um, you to as you would with um, making sure of course that it was a food grade uh, based chamomile but yes it's very soothing so you could have a drop in a cup of usually i would have it in a cup of white tea so something with the milk or something with the flat just fat to blend it through but that can be really nice and calming before bed nice the next one is y ylang ylang is that the correct correct pronunciation ylang ylang yes yes used to treat headaches nausea and skin conditions do you use that for anything else at all uh, this is a beautiful one to make in a replacement perfume as well. Mm. So many, many will, will detect the ylang ylang in a perfume base, but it is just a really nice floral tone to add to replace. Like there's a lot of chemicals in perfume. And if you wanted to simplify your life and simplify your health, even just plain ylang ylang can be beautiful to um, replace your perfume. Fantastic. And of course, tea tree, which you mentioned before, that's used to fight infections and boost immunity. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other uses for tea tree, tea tree which we're going to speak about in a moment, but do you want to leave that for later or do you want to maybe speak about it now? Uh, I'll just put my little handy 50 cent tip as well. Um, if you want to make your own cleaning spray, five to 10 drops of tea tree oil in a spray bottle with water maybe a dash of vinegar if you could be bothered but otherwise it's a pretty inexpensive replacement um, to use around the house and it's kid friendly as well excellent all natural the next one is jasmine and that's used to help with depression childbirth and lib libido that sounds pretty good 
Um, I yes. didn't know you could get jasmine oil, to tell you the truth. That's, that's a new one to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can, it, again, it's another, another expensive oil. Often they're, they're more expensive because they require a lot of flowers to be picked to create the oil. Um, but that one can be layered with rose and neroli as a, again, a beautiful replacement oil and just to help um, heal the heart. It's a really nice heart oil. Oh, beautiful. And the next one is lemon. Never thought of lemon oil before, but that's used to aid digestion, mood, headaches, and more. So do you use lemon oil with anything at all? Uh, food grade lemon oil. Yes, absolutely. It's an, if you don't have a lemon in the house and you're making a guacamole, a couple of drops of lemon oil in your avocado dip is amazing. Um, it's also really great to, to pop in lemon slices, lemon slices and lemon dishes. Um, you know, things like, um, what is it called? Lemon meringue pie. It's amazing. Ooh, that's my favourite. Well. Yeah. Now, I guess as a disclaimer, um, if our audience have a serious health condition or taking medication, um, they definitely should discuss the use of essential oils um, with a health uh, practitioner. Um, and for anyone else with minor health issues or just looking for support um, in their health and well-being, um, using essential oils as a supplementary therapy uh, definitely can be beneficial and worthwhile in, in fostering a wide range of advantages uh, for your health. Um, I'd love to know your, your thoughts on this overall. Oh, look, absolutely. I think with any dietary changes or supplement changes, um, lifestyle changes, it's really important that you get the right advice, um, seeking the advice of a health practitioner who's qualified to be able to help you um, is really important. And I always encourage people to do so before ingesting um, essential oils. So we do, there are food grade essential oils that we have in everyday products that we buy from the supermarket. Um, and if you do decide to use them internally, it's really important that you make sure that the oils are food grade. So they're not just, um, Mixes. Uh, there's not just fillers in there as well. Um, but essential oils are just wonderful to use topically. That means on your skin and diffused as well, like in a, in a diffuser, which you mentioned before. So that's a really great way to get started before you dive, dive further with essential oils. Yeah. And before we sort of um, get into more of the details about the benefits of them um, and uh, as another disclaimer, you know, a large percentage of our audience are mums who are either planning or expecting a baby. So I really wanted to highlight that there are a number of essential oils that pregnant women are uh, are advised not to use and these include uh, but but are not limited to because there are many um, but fennel clary sage mar marjoram tarragon caraway cinnamon sage um, parsley seed um, penny royal wintergreen there's a whole list of others so um, as a disclaimer please if you are pregnant or planning um, please check with your relevant health professional which ones are safe for you to use is there anything that you want to add to that at all Mel? I think it goes with the um, being empowered and educating yourself as well so absolutely seeking the advice of your healthcare practitioner and also taking the opportunity to learn about the essential oils so that you can um, there are some great reference books out there as well so that you can check those at any stage because we do move from stages of trying to conceive to pregnant and breastfeeding as well it's another thing to to um, just be aware of and using them around newborns just to be aware of and having a really good reference book can be really helpful so that you can check at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> maybe when you need to um, which oils might be appropriate or which ones to avoid fantastic advice now on a lighter note we published your article titled essential oils and kids now for someone who hasn't read the article yet can you please give us an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it Absolutely. So the article is around using um, well, basically my top essential oils to use a, around um, around the home for family health. Uh, it started off around um, 
what I mentioned before with the journey that we started with essential oils and starting with my son and making a very simple, easy moisturiser and then finding out that actually there are more essential oils essential oils out there other than lavender and tea tree that can be used to support our health um, and really just going through some simple ones to start with and some different ways on how to use them. Mm -hmm. Well, if you were to define then what um, are essential oils, how would you define that for anyone watching or listening? Uh, essential oils are amazing plant medicine. Uh, Plants are extremely clever and they create these chemical compounds that uh, the plant uses to protect itself. Um, it uses uh, these oils for, or these compounds for survival. And humans have cleverly found a way to ha um, harness the energy of these plants and the oils, extracting them in different ways. So you might um, you might know cinnamon bark that um, comes from the cinnamon tree. So it's this, you know, the cinnamon scrolls. So the cinnamon oil comes from the bark. You might know the lavender flower. So that lavender oil comes from the flower. And then there are other oils where the oils are extracted from the roots. So there's different ways that um, we can extract the essential oils, but essentially they're super concentrated um, plant medicine that yeah. we can use to, to help our own health and in, in a variety of different ways around the home. So essential oils are essentially a con concentrated plant extract that sort of retain the natural smell and flavour, I guess, or essence of their original source, would you say? Yes, yes. And you think about um, lemon and when you peel a lemon or you peel, you don't maybe not peel an, a lemon, but when you peel a mandarin or a, an orange, oh, it's just that, that burst, smell. that smell. And so those oils from citrus are in the skin and that's, that's exactly what you're smelling there. It's amazing fresh freshness. <laughs> For anyone that's worked with me before, I'm one of those strange people. There's a perfume. Uh, it's not an essential oil. And um, this is obviously, I'm, I'm not paid at all to say this, but there's a, a perfume, a, a British label called uh, Jo Malone. And uh, she has I love this, jo Malone. Oh, the, the signature fragrance, which is the lime basil and mandarin and every winter of course when I you know used to sit there at work and I'd be peeling my mandarin I literally exactly what you were just saying I'd sort of get the mandarin peel and sort of squeeze and all that essence would come out and you know it would sort of just pretend I was smelling Jo Malone but anyway <laughs> enough of me being strange and stuff but yes I understand what you're saying because I've done that many a times and yeah that is all the essential good stuff that comes out of the uh, absolutely <laughs> of the fruit and I Think, and that's the thing with essential oils that smell just it's linked uh, our sense of smell is uh, linked to our memory system so when we smell Very much. smell it we are sometimes taken back to our childhood or a certain moment in time which is which can be really really lovely anchors back to an emotion absolutely now in saying that how can we use essential oils to help our children well there's a range of uh common kid kid kitty issues uh, that come up so sleep is one thing that uh, can be supported with essential oils we use lavender and we diffuse that at night time uh, if the kids are having trouble getting to sleep or staying asleep um, and we also at times when needed will dilute the essential oil like a, a drop of lavender in a carrier oil a carrier oil is an oil that doesn't have and necessarily a therapeutic property but it helps to spread the oil further so you're not having to use a lot of essential oils but it also helps it to go into the skin and be held into the skin so we use a carrier oil we use um, jojoba oil in our house sometimes and so a drop of lavender with a little bit of jojoba oil um, rubbed into the soles of the feet before bed or on, on the back is a really nice way to help support your child have a really good healthy bedtime routine that's beautiful that's really beautiful and in the article you actually list uh, six essential oils um, and different ways that you can use them we have sort of touched on some of them but I just wondered if you could just quickly talk through each of them and just you know with your suggestions how we can use them the first one that you speak about in the article is um, lavender 
Yes, so we also use lavender. Lavender is one of the most versatile essential oils. So if you're going to pick one, I would go with lavender. Um, again, alongside with sleep, it can help with stress. So that's great for parents as well as children. Um, rubbing it on the shoulders or the back of the head or just popping a drop um, on a tissue and smelling that, tucking that in your bra. If you're going around um, during the day and you need something that just relieves your stress, that's a great way um, to go about it as a, as a parent or an adult. Nice. Um, and scratches and scrapes, bites, those sorts of things. So the, a lavender has antihistamine properties. Now, you might have heard of histamines before being that um, the reaction of, you know, tears, the runny nose, um, associated with hay fever, um, itchy throat. So it calms down all of those things. So it can really soothe the scrapes and the, um, um, the scrapes and the grazes that little ones have when they fall over. And also with any itchy bites, that can be really helpful as well. So just using that topically. Again, I always dilute because we're using them around kids, but I generally dilute them anyway. Um, and you can just dab that on a cotton ball and, and dab it on their knees or wherever, wherever the scrapes or bites are. Wow, there's a lot more uses to lavender than I thought, but they all seem to sort of have some form of a calming effect, would you say? Yes, absolutely, yes. Spot yeah, the, on. the next one you have on your list is tea tree. This one's also a, little, a good one to pop in your little um, scratch and scrape uh, blend. So lavender and tea tree can go well together. And it goes well because it has the complement of the antibacterial properties. So if there's, you know, there's a little bit of dirt in there or you think that it's looking a little bit red from an infection perspective, tea tree is a really nice one to complement that. And tea tree has been used for hundreds if not thousands of years for, um, for that purpose, for the antibacterial properties. We also, I'll pop this in the diffuser with lavender and peppermint. If it's a really windy day, you know, springs, spring has sprung and you've got that pollen in the air and you've got that sort of um, itchy eyes, runny nose, that's, I'll also use tea tree for that as well. So that mix again was tea tree, lavender, and what was the other? Pep peppermint. Wonderful. I'm going to peppermint. try that myself, yeah. actually. Thank you for that. And, and into You're a welcome. diffuser. <laughs> into the next a one, diffuser, yeah. Yeah. And the next one on the list is lemon. Oh, this is sunshine in a bottle. I don't know. I mean, we talked about before about peeling an orange, but the lemon essential oil just brightens my day. Um, if you're ever feeling low, if you're ever feeling like you're a bit flat or tired, a lemon essential oil will, will just give you the pick, you, pick me up that you might need. Um, and also it's really great for getting the sticky labels off your glass bottles or uh, sticky stuff off the carpet <laughs> with the kids in the house. So that's a really, um, lemon is, I did, yep, yeah, sunshine in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next one we have on the list is oregano. Oregano, oregano is known as a hot oil. So this one, actually, if you put it directly on the skin, you'll feel a warming, potentially a burning um, sensation. So it's really important that you keep the, your, all of your essential oils away from your kids, so up on a high shelf. But this one in particular, you always dilute it if you're using it topically. Um, it's a great oil to use to support your immune system. And so we'll diffuse this one throughout winter and we might add some tea tree or lemon in that as well. I, I don't love the smell of oregano and I think this goes with uh, some people feeling like they need to love the smell of something for it to have an, a positive effect. This one I like to disguise with other oils and, but, uh, but still use it in the mix to help support our immune system. Never knew I never thought of using oregano as an oil, but thank you very much for sharing that with us. And, and it's good to know that it's good for immune system. The next one's peppermint. Uh, this is also a staple in our house. I was surprised actually how much peppermint I go through um, each, each month or so. This one, as I mentioned before, is great for ants, but it's also great for tension. So if you're feeling like you've got sore muscles, soothing those uh, with peppermint can be really helpful. Again, don't forget to dilute. 
Um, and a friend also uses this for growing pains for her little one. Um, so diluting and, and, and rubbing down uh, the, the long bones has been really soothing for her little one, um, particularly at night time when, when sometimes you feel like there's nothing else you can do to help them. This one can really help. Great tip. And the last one you have on your list is frankincense, if I pronounce that correctly. Frankincense. Perfect. Frankincense is a really earthy essential oil and grounding. So if you're feeling like you need some support mentally, this one's a really lovely one. Um, it's known as the king of oils. And it has really beautiful anti-inflammatory properties. So it's really calming, grounding, as I said before. One of my favorite blends, again, again with the perfume replacement, I think this is probably because I, when my older son had eczema and allergies and we did a clear out of all the chemicals in our house, or, or, perfume was one of the things that was hardest to let go of because of the smell association and the memories and the emotions. But I found a beautiful replacement and that is uh, frankincense, lavender, and orange oh lovely. and that is an amazing um amazing um scent which just can be grounding both grounding and and uplifting okay that's a great tip well what you know what what other tips do you have i guess for using essential oils around the home then well in general <laughs> I, I start start where you are so if you feel like you want to dip your toe in slowly and get a couple of essential oils, that is a great way to start. Um, if you feel like you're ready to dive in, then I would still start, I would start with a little a starter kit where you might have a range of essential oils. Get yourself a really great um, reference book so that you can flick through and know how to use your essential oils safely. And um, don't, don't feel, don't be afraid to seek out a, um, seek out some essential oil groups out there that might have some great recipes and refer back to your book just to double check um, that that fits your need as well. Yeah, I think having a, a book and a point of reference to know the blends and to know the the out, um, I guess the benefits in them um, is something that sort of takes time, um, but no doubt um, you know the, the the benefits would. Um, outweigh any time or anything put into sort of that research and as you mentioned before too you know using a diffuser um, can also give off a medicinal effect when absorbed because it's about how the the, um, the essential oils are absorbed into our system in our bloodstream is, is that I guess how they uh, they start to affect us I guess or we, that we benefit yes, from absolutely. them? Yes absolutely so for I, I love using the diffuser if you've got Maybe you've got people in the house who don't necessarily want to embrace essential oils. That's a nice way of just in, um, incorporating them in, in a very gent gentle way. Um, and I'll also use a, diff a diffuser around the house when we've got um, sort of respiratory issues, so lung issues that we want to breathe them in. If you're thinking back to the time of the vapor rub, Vicks vapor rub and the you know the steam bowls where you, I don't know if you did that as a kid, but yeah. we did a drop of um, eucalyptus oil in some hot water with a um, tea towel over your head. And so um, if you're thinking about using that for supporting the lungs, it's the same way with the diffuser. You could use it for supporting the lungs that way, as well as a general overall benefit. And then if you've got a sore spot or somewhere where in particular that you need attention with the essential oils, that's when I would use them more topically. And so diluting them and putting them on the particular area that's sore or you've got the greys will help help in that local area and be absorbed into the bloodstream that way. Mm, great tips. So what, what are your suggestions then um, for the best oils, I guess, for a family to start with? So I really think that the, those top five, five to six oils that we talked about today are a really great starting point. Um, they're really versatile. So you can use them to start um, supporting the health of, the, of your family. It, it helps with from energy, stress, mood, immune system, and they're kind of really key areas um, to cover. But also then those oils will allow you to start replacing um, 
if you're looking to simplify and um, clean out some of the chemicals in your home, cleaning products, moisturizers, personal care products, they're also a really good complement and really great place to start as well because you can start with those essential oils too. So it ends up being cost effective with starting with those sorts of oils to begin with. Yes. And on the flip side of all the good stuff, I mean, can, um, I guess, essential oils look, cause any harm? Um, it, and is that something that I guess people have to sort of be mindful of if they potentially have um, asthma or um, they can cause rashes or allergic reactions or anything like that at all or, or, or not? I don't know. Look, absolutely. Look, they're really concentrated um, compounds from plants and you know some even though they're natural uh, there's poison ivy that's natural and that can cause rashes um, there are and because they're so concentrated that's when they can potentially irritate the skin so it's really important that you dilute the essential oils when you're using them on the skin um, it also saves you money by diluting them because you're not having to use so much and being aware of the dilution ratios as well for um, for children and adults and people with sensitive skin, I usually will recommend my clients um, who do have eczema, if they're starting with essential oils, they would use one drop to 10 mils of a carrier oil. So it's very, very diluted. Sometimes even that it can be too much. Um, but it's a really personal thing. So everyone's got different levels of sensitivities. So it's really important that you patch test and go slowly. The other thing is that um, essential oils do have health benefits and they do affect our body. But sometimes people are on medications. And so sometimes medications and essential oils may have an interaction or they might be trying to do the same thing, which might be too much for your body. So it's really important that you talk about it with your GP about starting essential oils if you're on any medication as well. Yeah, like we said at the very start of the chat too. So, Absolutely. Um, and can I add one more thing, Rachel? Sorry. Yeah, don't be sorry. It's really important that we um, avoid the eyes when we're using essential oils. So oh, yes. washing our hands really, really well um, before touching eyes. But we want to avoid putting oils in our eyes in our ears, um, mucous membranes, so nose and around the mouth, and then I say your pits and your bits. <laughs> so you want to <laughs> you want to make sure you wash your hands really well before you go to the toilet as well, um, because as I said before, some of the oils can be hot oils, and so we really don't want them in any of our sensitive. As an avid chili eater, um, I, I've been there many times cooking me chilies and then go, oh, I'm going to itchy eye. And then I'm like, ah, my God, that hurts. So, yes, I, I completely understand. Not, not, maybe not an essential oil, but yes, I do hear you. <laughs> now, absolutely. <laughs> so, with families now that they're, they're listening to this or watching this and thinking, okay, I'm going to give this a shot, how do people actually know how to choose the right essential oils? Because there's a lot out there. Where, where, where do people start? Absolutely. So uh, there are lots of different companies out there that do essential oils. I recommend that you find a, a company that uh, tests their essential oils for being pure and being the right essential oil, but also making sure that there's nothing else in the bottle that you're buying because often they're diluted with other oils or um, other chemicals in there, or they might be synthetic. And we want to make sure that if we're using them and we want to have health benefits, that we're using the most pure form of essential oils. Um, and then really, if you're wanting to dive in, a lot of the companies have little starter kits on where to start. So contacting, um, contacting the company. I've got some information on my website about um, essential oils and how to get started, or even starting with a reference book um, to have a look through to see which ones might suit. Might be a way to go for some people, but I would start simple. Start simple, go with the top five or six, and, and then you can expand from there if, that, if you're finding that essential oils resonate with you. Cool. So what I'm hearing, and tell me if I heard it right, to look for high quality oils um, and only use pure plant sort of compound extracted um, and a lot of them are sort of 
either distilled or they're sort of cold pressed, I think, aren't they? Yes. Um, yeah. And to avoid oils that have been sort of diluted with synthetic sort of fragrances, chemicals or oils. They're generally sort of the cheaper ones, aren't they, that you see sort of in the, the cheapy sort of stores. So to sort of just be mindful of those ones. So look for pure oils, really. Um, yes, absolutely. Would, and um, I sort of find, and um, usually they've got the full, the plants like botanical name, um, which is a long sort of technical scientific name, Lavendula official Alice or whatever they're called. Oh, as opposed to, yeah, yep. Yeah, see, yeah, <laughs> that's why you're the professional. <laughs> uh, <laughs> rather than, you know, essential oil of just lavender or something, you know, layman terms like I would use. Um, and I think you mentioned before too, a chemical free oil, essential oil that's been extracted really through um, that, um, sort of mechanical cold pressing as well. Is that is that right? Yes. So the different different plants are, um, or depending if it's a fruit or the flower, they're extracted in different ways. But it should say on the label um, what the ingredients are. One thing to note, though, is often they don't label what else is in the is in the essential oil. So do a bit of research and find out. It's not hard these days to have a little look um, to see what essential oils are 100% pure. Um, and there are some companies out there that will show all their testing as well. So if you can access their testing of the product and they're happy to have it transparent on the, um, for everyone to see, I think they're, they're, a, they're a trusted company to go with. Yeah. So it, definitely to purchase a brand with a reputation for producing high quality products. And there's a, quite a few out there. I use doTERRA quite a lot um and and love their stuff but not saying that you have to but i mean that they are sort of widely uh well respected and there's a whole heap of others of course now getting back to what we were saying earlier uh, we mentioned before that there are a list of es essential oils that women who are pregnant um that they should avoid um and that is very important um, however, there are essential oils that are safe for pregnancy and they can actually help with a few ailments. Um, and I just wanted to sort of go through a few of these just to get your thoughts too. So to, to relieve nausea, things like lavender, chamomile, peppermint and ginger. ginger. Um, and, you know, either sort of sniffing those or one or two drops into a diffuser can sort of help. Um, and they can sort of help ease um, sort of like morning sickness and that sort of stuff as well. Have you heard of any of that stuff before? Yes, look, absolutely. And I think um, some of the listeners out there might be familiar with having ginger products. And before I had heard about essential oils and used them, um, you would have a ginger tea for nausea or you would have a peppermint tea for nausea. So all of these, um, these oils now that we're using do have origins of being used for, for a long period of time before people use them in the oil form. So absolutely, yes. They're they definitely do. worth a go if you're feeling unwell during pregnancy. Yeah, and maybe they could even sort of drop a few of the, the, the droplets into like a hanky or something like that to sort of sniff or a cotton ball um, as well. Um, as we are saying earlier, it might be a quicker and easier way to sort of get it into the bloodstream. A different thing too um, is to improve health. So lavender, ylang, ylang, mandarin and frankincense, same sort of thing. Um, as you mentioned before, like a blend of those types of things can sort of um, help to improve sleep um, for pregnant women. Um, is there anything else I guess you want to um, maybe add to that at all? No, diffusing is a really lovely, gentle way to use the oils. So that's how I would um, start with someone in, um, during pregnancy. Again, uh, making sure that they had a reference book and um, had sought the advice of their healthcare practitioner. And uh, essential oils for, for um, pregnant women also can help to soothe muscle aches. So things like lavender, ylang ylang, again, ginger, chamomile and frankincense in any combination, once again, can sort of help um, with that. And uh, the, uh, the horrible hemorrhoids, but they, apparently I was reading that, that um, essential oils can help. So tea tree, um, geranium, uh, is, it, is it cypress? Is that how you pronounce it? And lavender? Cypress, yes. Um, these can actually help to soothe swelling and irritation as well. Um, have, have you heard of anything like that? Um, it's been used. No, in the I context. haven't, Rachel. Not for hemorrhoids. I've never. Um, I wonder how they would be used if that was topically. Definitely need to dilute. Definitely need to investigate that one. Yes. <laughs> if you were going to use them topically. 
Well, I, I was I was reading um, that the you blend all of them together and for a total of eight drops all together. So it is diluted and add the mixture to two tablespoons of aloe vera gel and then apply a concoction directly onto the affected area with a cotton ball or a tissue. So I, um, I just didn't know if you'd heard of that before, but I've no, I hadn't, but there's, I mean, there's so many uses of essential that's just oils thing. and that's absolutely yeah, we, and going back to the very start of our discussion where there's, there's 90 of them, um, it really does, you know, <laughs> sort of make the mind boggle as to all the different things that they can help with. Um, and I've loved this, this, this chat today. If you were to um, summarise, I guess, your key messages for anyone watching or listening, um, what would they be? Essential oils are a lovely complement to a new family or a, a family that's going to become a bigger family. Um, start simple, don't overcomplicate it. Make sure that you are informed and empowered and find the, find the best essential oils that work for you. Enjoy them. Yes. And look, we'll, we will have a link um, through to the article, but if people have got any questions for you um, and or want to contact you um, after watching or listening, whereabouts can they find you? Sure, they can find me at yourjourneytohealing.net um, and on Facebook, I'm at Your Journey to Healing with Melissa. Fantastic. And we'll have all of those links in the show notes. Love this chat, Mel. And let's, let's uh, chat again soon. Take care. Thanks so much, Rachel. Bye. Bye.